morning, Bokitov. I think what we're going to do, if it's all right with you, we're going to summarize a few points from Daf Mem Ahmed Aleph and then focus in on Mem Ahmed Bays in order to get to today's Daf Mem Aleph because it's all like one long sugya. So to highlight Mem Ahmed Aleph, the Gemara, about one third of the, of the way down Mem Ahmed Aleph, quotes a Mishnah in Mesech Dinagayim. And the Mishnah states that Shlosha Megalchim V'tiglachtam Mitzvah. So the Mishnah uh, joins together three cases where there's a Mitzvah of Tiglachas, and that's going to be Nazir, at the end of his Naziris, and a Mitzorah, who has to do a Tiglachas twice, once at the beginning and once at the end during his Tara period, and finally the Levim, during the Midbar period, they needed Tiglachas. And the Mishnah in Nagoyim establishes that what's common to all three is that the mitzvah can only be fulfilled through a tar, through a razor. That's the Tiglachas. And the Gemara goes on to say that two out of the three cases we understand, they're explicit in the Torah. For example, in the case of Nazir, the Torah says, Tar lo yavra al rosho. And from the Iser Tar, we're going to derive the mitzvah of Giluach, because the mitzvah of Giluach is the flip side of the Iser Lav, and therefore you require Tar. In the case of the Levim, it says explicitly, Vaviru Tar al kol besarim. So Tar is mentioned. And then the Gemara goes through the issue of Mitzorah. How do we know that Tiglachas Mitzorah can be fulfilled only with Tar? And the Gemara goes through a very long limud to try to derive Mitzorah from the Levium, and that we couldn't do, try to derive Mitzorah from Nazir, and that we couldn't do until finally we came up with a kind of a that if we combine Nazir and the Levim, then we could derive Mitzorah. And that's called the Tzad HaShavah, although again, it's a little bit more complicated than that because in the Bryce of Rabbi Shmuel, it's called a Binyan Ab Mishnei Ksuvim. However, in a Sefer called Alichas Olam, it's called by a different name. And it's just coming but at the end of the day, it's going to be a binyanav. So what's the bottom line, so to speak, that we want to take back with us from Daf Mem Omer Aleph? It's going to be the following. There are two brysos that are quoted one on Daf Mem Amad Aleph and one earlier on Daf Lamed Tesam and Beis. The Brisa earlier on Daf Lamed Tesam and Beis assumes that in the case of Mitzora, it's Pashut that a Mitzora requires for his Mitzvah of Tiglachas Tar. We, we, we had that as a double Pashut, and in fact, we're going to derive. Nazir from Mitzorah. That's one b'risa. And the b'risa on Daf Mem is just the opposite. We're going to derive Mitzorah from Nazir and a combination of Nazir and the Levim. So that here we're going to start on Daf Mem Amid Beis with Amar Le, which is approximately one, two, three, four, six lines down from the top of the Amut. And this is Rava, who is raising a question of a steer between these two brysos. And his name is Rava Bar Masharshia, and he's talking to Rava, and he says, Hi, Taname Kara, the earlier brysa on Daflam and Tesom and Beis, Omar had established Lilamdo Mimitsora, that on the contrary, Nazir is derived from Mitsora, that the Giluach 
requires time. And and the Gemara says that maybe the Torah requires Mitzora Tar because of the Chumra of Mitzora that he requires to be Megalech called Gufo. Nazar only requires to be Megalech Sarosho. But then Hadar Omar in the Brisa on Daf Mem Amr Aleph, the longer Brisa with the Tzara Shovitz actually, Nelef Midina, it would seem just the opposite, that we're going to derive Mitzora, meaning that Tiglachas Mitzora requires Tar, Midina from the law of Nazir and, and Levium together with the Tzad Shova. And furthermore, Umidina Nami Lo Yolif. And even from the Tzad Shova between Nazir and Levium, we weren't able to derive that Tiglachas Mitzor requires Tar because we had a, a rejection which was called Malatzada Shabbat 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 to today's Shabbat of Mem Aleph, Rava says in response to Rava Bar Shabbat Hahu, the earlier Brisa that establishes on Daf Shabbat 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 that Mitzorah is Pashut, that it requires Tar. And on the contrary, we're going to drive Nazir from Mitzorah. That's our Libid Rabbana. So we'll see in a minute a mission in Makis that records Machlok Shin Rabbanon and Rabbi Eliezer. So Rav is telling us that according to the Rabbanon, we're going to derive. Tiglach Aspetar in the case of Mitzorah from the word zik, Zikno. And that's going to be in the Pasuk, that's Zikano, excuse me. Okay, we'll see the Pasuk in just a second. Verha in the price that derives on Daf Mem, Mitzorah, that requires Tiglach Aspetar from Nazar and Levim, that's a Libra the Rabbi Eliezer who holds that the Torah never really taught us that Tiglachas Mitzorah requires Tar, and he's not going to accept the, the Limud of Zkano. And therefore, he's going to require deriving the Halach of Tiglachas Mitzorah from Nazir, and from a Tzadashov, perhaps, from Nazir and Levin. Disnan. Where do we find this Mishnah that records the Machlokes between Rabbonin and Rabbi Eliezer? Now, at this point, the Gemara talks about a different halacha of cutting one's hair, and that's the love of Vayikrach of Aleph Upas Zekonim Lo Yigalechu, and and that Pasuk is addressing Kohanim, and there's also a Pasuk, Kedoshim to you, with regard to Yisraelim, in Vayikra Perak Yutes, there's a separate love of Los Ashkis as Pas Zekoncha. So there could be in the case of a Kohan, he violates two Lavim. And the Mishnah records the following Machlokas between the Tanakama and Rabbi Eliezer, and that Machlokas is going to impact on Tiglachas Mitzorah and how we derive it. So the Tanakhama says, Eino Chayev, a person who violates Hashchas Zakon, is only Chayev, Achil Yilketenu Betar. He requires, in order to violate the love of Pa'as Zakono, that he uses a tar, he uses a razor. Rabbi Eliezer, on the other hand, Omer Afil Likto Bimalkate, Uber Hitni Chayev. These are different kinds of Kalim that are a little bit more similar to um, a kind of of um, of a Tiglachas that's unusual. In other words, instead of using a classic um, what, what we would call Giluach Kidarko, and that's Betar, he uses unusual Kalim. 
Now, again, I don't want to get into too much detail about what these kalim are, because that's going to take us too much time for today. But let's just say the following. Malakate, or malkate is the better pronunciation. That's a, a special kli that's used to sharpen up swords. And it, 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 it's kind of like the, the tick, you know, the, the uh, container where you put the, the sword and you rub it back and forth and it sharpens the, the sword. And rehitni is a kind of clee that they use to smoothen out uh, wood for, let's say, uh, tree sim and so forth and so on. And Rabbi Eliezer expands now the application of the violation of the Isash Chasazakan to include other utensils beyond tar. And now the Gemara goes into a an analysis of this machlokis between the Rabbanon and Rabbi Eliezer regarding the Iser of Hashchasas Hazokan. My Tamayu de Rabbanon, the Sanya, the why the Rabbanon limited to, to Tar. So let's, let's add a little bit of an introduction here to to this, the, the end of Daf Mem Amid Beis, but really to the entire Daf Mem Aleph. And that is the following. That we're going to have an essay of Tiglachas, in let's say, for example, the case of Mitzora, And when the Mitzora fulfills his mitzvah of Tiglachas, then, and he takes all the hair off his entire body from head to toe, he is Mamela also violating the Iser Lav of Giluach Zakat. And the Torah is going to go out of its way to teach me with a special Pasuk of Zkano that despite the violation of the Iser Hashchasas HaZakan, Nevertheless, for the sake of the mitzvah of Tiglachas Mitzorah, the Torah permits it. So in essence, in reality, he's going to be violating the Isra Hashchas Zakan, but for the greater good, so to speak, of fulfilling the mitzvah of Tiglachas Mitzorah. And since we've already established that according to the Rabbanon, the Isra of Hashchas Zakan only applies to Atar, Mimela, I can assume that Tiglachas Mitzora, which is now overriding the Isra of Hashchasa Zakan, is also Betar. The Sanya, we learned in Abraisa, the Abraisa is analyzing the Posuk in the parish of Tiglachas Mitzora, Vayikri Yudal, Vayob Yom Hashvi'i, Yigalach Es Kol Siaro Es Rosho, Ves Zikono, Ves Gabos Eino, Ves Kol Siaro Yigaleach. So again, the Torah says, "Ves kol siaro yigaleach," requiring a tiglachas of the entire body, every last hair in his body. And yet, the Torah specifies rosho ves zikano, etc. Is kano matamid lomer? The Rabbanu now are going to focus on the word zikano because we want to get back to the Yisra Ashkas Zakan. And lefish and emer pasa kano lo yigalechu that the kohenim are enjoyed from giluach of Sar Pa'as HaZokan, and that's Bitar, which as we saw earlier in the mission of the, of, in Marcus, is the Shita of the Rabbanon, that you don't violate the Yisra Ashchas HaZokan unless you use a Tar. Is Yochel Afilu Mitzorah. I would think that if the Mitzorah, when he wants to fulfill his mitzvah of Tiglachas Mitzorah, which is called Tiglachas Taro, is Cain, he should also be enjoined from cutting off the hairs of his beard because the Torah says that you're, you're violating with a tar, that Easter of Hashchas Zokan, Talmud Lomar, 
Therefore, the Torah in the parish of Tiglachas Mitzor goes out of its way to add the words Kano, which is a redundant word, because since he has to cut off all the hairs on his body, why did the Torah have to add Zikano and, and hone in on Zikano to teach me that even though he's a Kohen and he has that additional love of Ashkosos Kano, nevertheless, for the sake of Tiglachas Mitzor, we're going to allow it. And this is basically an application of the rule of mitzvahs ase doche losase. And the mitzvah ase of, of giluach mitzor is going to override the losase of ashchasa zakan. And also of uh, kedoshim tiv that we mentioned earlier. So from the fact that we need a posuk to teach me that a koi mitzorah is megalech zakano, we see that tiglochos mitzorah is betar. Because again, if tiglachos mitzorah did not have to be dafka betar, then a koin mitzora would be allowed to be megalech. I don't need a ribui, a special ribui, to override the isra shchos zokon, which is only betar. So we see that from the fact that Torah needs this matir, this ribui, to teach me that you, for the sake of mitzvahs, tiglachs mitzora, we override ashchos, so we must be talking about tiglachs mitzora betar, because the isra shchos zokon is only betar. So the Gemara not immediately asks, so we know in betar, and how does how did the Chachomim actually derive the conclusion that the Yisra Ashchoses Zokon is only Betar? And again, if you go back to the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Pa'asakonom lo yigalechu. Correct? So who says that Pa'asakonom lo yigalechu, that that love is referring specifically to Tar. Had a Rabbanu know such a thing? The Sanya we learned in Avraisa, who pa'as zekonim lo yigalechu, the Torah prohibits the konim from gilu of pa'as zekonim. Yochel, I might think, I feel gilcha misparayim. Maybe if he scissors off his pa'as zekonim, he violates the Slav Yechai. Talmud Lomar, it says in the Pasuk, Velosashkis. Now again, this possible of Sashkis in Parshas Kedoshim is addressing Yisrael, not Kohen. But in any event, what's important for us here is the language Los Sashkis. Chashis means that he completely removes it. Like today, we have all these issues about what shavers you're allowed to use for shaving. So the question is whether or not the shaver actually goes down to the root of the hair and removes the hair on his beard. And that's going to be a problem. So the Torah only prohibits hashchasa. However, if you take a scissors, then the scissors doesn't really go down to the shorsh, to the root of the hair. And that's not called hashchasa. But the Bryce is not happy with that. That's not sufficient. The Bryce asks, if the Easter is los sashkis, is then I don't even need a tar. Yochel likto b'malkeit uber hitni. Again, these are kalim that are not regilim for giluach. It's not like a tar. But on the other hand, yehechayev, because it's mashkis the Sarah zokamei karo from the shoresh. Talmud lomer pa'as zekonim lo yigalechu. And lo yigalechu means dafka giluach, which is the regular, normal way the classic Yiluach, which is with a tar. So we now have a stira, because on the one hand, the Torah says, Los Ashkis, which implies, in the broader sense, any keli that goes down to the Shoresh. On the other hand, the Torah says, Lo Yigalechu, which means, Tafka, Derech Gilucho, Tilafuki Milkat, and Rehitni. Malkate and Rehitni. What Kate said, how do we reconcile this? Ezi Giluach, Sheyesh Bashchasa. What would be a giluch, which is a normal giluch, and it has the additional requirement of ashchasa, which means it goes down to uproot the hair from its root. Heavy omer is etar. Only etar could fulfill both of these requirements. Number one, it's hashchas because it goes down to the shoresh. And number two, it's considered giluch because it's the normal way that you shave. So we now know that the Iser of Hashchos Zazokin only applies with the Tar. So the Gemara rejects this um, proof 
that mitzora needs to be megalech dafka b'tzar. Remember that the heter of giluach in the case of a koy mitzora would teach me that mitzora needs tar, because otherwise, why do I have to override anything if mitzora could be fulfilled even shalom tar? So Gemara says, me my, I'm not sure. And I'm not convinced that Tiglachas Mitzorah requires a tar. Dilma, perhaps, li olam afil likto b'malkeit uberhitni nami mitzvah kovit. Perhaps the Mitzorah could fulfill his mitzvah Tiglachas even with other kalim. And he doesn't need to use a razor. Ay v'ho. Now you'll ask me, what do we, what do we learn from, from the Pasuk of Vaya b'yom ashvi galeches kol tzoros v'oshom v'ezikano why do we need the extra word zikano? We said that that was redundant because he's taking off all the hairs on his body. And the more answers, the means that mitzora is allowed to be alech even bitar. He doesn't have to use a tar. The Gemara is now playing the devil's advocate. Maybe the mitzora could fulfill his mitzvah of tiglachas even with other kalim, but the Torah went out of its way by adding the words kind of, to tell me that even if the Mitzorah chooses to remove his hair by using a tar, lo he will not be violating the Yisra Ashkosah Zakan, and we're going to apply the principle of Esei Dochalosas. So again, this is where we're holding now that the Gemara has a Dechia that you cannot derive from this Essay Dochalosis, meaning that Tiglach's Mitzora as the flip side of Hashkas's Zakan must be Betar, because maybe Hashcha, maybe Tiglach's Mitzora could be even fulfilled with other Kalim, but the Chiddush of Skano is that even though he is using a Tar, if he chooses to use so, but he didn't have to use a Tar, nevertheless, he doesn't violate any law of Hashkas's Zakan because the essay of Tiglachas Mitzora overrides, and this we derive from Skano, the Yisra Ashchas Zaka. And the Gemara rejects this now for two reasons. Amri number one, Isal Kedaitoch, Ki Ovid Nami B'malkeit Uberhitni Shaper Dami, we're not going to be, ha- be able to apply the principle of Esei Docha if the Tiglachas Mitzorah Mitzvah could have been fulfilled with other Kalim without violating Ashkos Zakan. Because Lishto Kromine, Vano Aminon, Malagabi Nozid, the Surika of it, Afilu Achim Echayev, Hacha the Mitzvah Lokal Shkane. And this, my friends, is one of the strangest Gemaras I ever learned. The Gemara says that the Torah didn't have to add this Ribui, and we would have derived that. A mitzora is permitted to be megalech betar from a kalvachomer, and that kalvachomer is going to be derived from another mitzvah of tiglachas nazir tar, because the mitzvah of tiglachas nazir tar overrides the isra kafas harosh, and here we have the strangest kalvachomer umalagabi nazir di sura kaavid, and afilu hachi mechayev. Even though it's Hakafas Harosh, he has to be Megaleach Rosho. So we're not talking about Hashkas Zokan, but rather uh, Giluach Rosho. And in the case of Nazir, where he violated an Easter, yet the Torah is going to say that he could override the Easter Giluach Harosh for the sake of his mitzvah of Tiglachas Nazir. Is Hachav Mitzorah the mitzvah? In the case of Tiglachas Mitzorah, we're not talking about Chet. We're talking about a mitzvah of Kolshkin, and it's more so that the mitzvah of Tiglachas Mitzorah is going to override the Isra, Ashkos Zakan. Now, what's the Isra lav of here, the chote that the Nazir is violating? And what's the mitzvah of, of Mitzorah? In fact, the Gemara says in Erechim that Saras is a punishment for Averos. And not only that, Nazir is a great mitzvah. But the answer is that Nazir fits in the general category of Nidarim. And a no, a no there is considered a chote. On the other hand, a mitzorah could be the son of a mitzorah. And uh, he was not guilty. I'm sorry, the son of someone who violated Esau Lashon Hara, whatever it was. And he's 
perfectly guiltless, but he became a mitzvah. And now we start the daf mem aleph. So that finishes daf mem amid beis.